Mike Radich here, and I'm now joined on the phone by Lion Fight CEO, Scott Kent. Scott, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm a little bit under the weather. I have a cold, but I'm going to fight through it and get this interview done. So, Lion Fight 16 coming up this Friday, the 4th of July. Since it is a fight week, I'm just curious, how busy are Lion Fight offices right now? You know, it's crazy. Um, Fight week has so much momentum. It's such an international event, and and to be a part of that is huge for us. Um, I'm at a gym now. We've got a couple fighters here that are going to do a few more training sessions uh, as we get closer to July 4th, so we're thrilled. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, you've been in talks with the UFC for about a year trying to get this set up so you guys would be a part of International Fight Week and have a show in conjunction with, with their event and their UFC Fan Expo. What was the dialogue like between you and the UFC, and, and who approached who to be a part of the event? Well, actually, Reed Harris was with the UFC. Um, we had coffee one day, and we were talking about it. It took about you know nine months to a year to put this thing together, and then I had lunch with Dana, and Lorenzo joined us, and uh, everybody thought this was a spectacular idea to showcase one of the... Uh, most exciting strength, uh, stand-up striking arts that all, all of their fighters train in. So it, there was really a great connection there and great opportunity for us to showcase Muay Thai. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, you guys are starting an hour earlier. You're going to be going at 6 p.m. instead of 7 p.m. Pacific time uh, so people can get out and, and go see the fireworks after the fight. But uh, can't you tell the city of Las Vegas, hey, we're putting on plenty of fireworks at the Palms. Just save, just save the fireworks. we got plenty for you. Boy, that's sure. That has certainly been the discussion <laughs> as far as uh, everybody excited J- just by the the matchups that we have. I mean, they're all great stand-up fighters, um, great elbows. Everything looks really exciting. I don't think the city of Las Vegas is going to yield to us, though. I think uh, the minute the sun goes down, they start their fireworks. So we wanted to make sure that all of our fans that came in from uh, – uh, other parts of the country, and actually we're getting a lot of people from other parts of the world are coming to this thing to uh, partake in uh, the celebration in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, it's too bad. It's too bad. You guys were really doing a public service. You could have saved the city money because you're putting on plenty of fireworks <laughs> at your event. So, uh, But anyways... Good idea. Yeah, yeah. So anyways... The event starting a little bit earlier. Uh, is the plan to have the fans go to the UFC uh, weigh-ins right from the weigh-ins? Go to your fight is, uh, and see the prelims. Is that the plan? Is that what you're hoping they'll do? Yeah, we are on the schedule events for the UFC Fight Week. They have their uh, weigh-in, and uh, they're encouraging everybody to come over to the Palms directly after the weigh-in. Uh, our amateur fights are going to start at four o'clock. Uh, as you mentioned, it's a, it's an hour earlier, and then our televised main card will start at six o'clock. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, will Dana White and Lorenzo Fertitta will they be at Lion Fight sixteen? And also, will you be at any of the events that they have going on? Obviously, there's UFC one seventy five on Saturday, and then on Sunday there's the Ultimate Fighter nineteen finale. Will you be at either one of those cards? And also, are they coming to your event? You know, they've all been invited. Uh, I got a uh, text from uh, Dana on Friday or Saturday um, just, you know, about being excited about the event and, you know, let's let's kick some ass. So that's what we intend to do. And I plan on going to the, uh, the UFC fight Saturday night and possibly Sunday. Mm. I see, I see. Now, speaking of live events, you were at the World Series of Fighting 10 card. I spotted you in the crowd. Uh, they did a little crowd scan, and I saw you at that event. How was that event? How, how did you enjoy those fights? You know, Ray Seppo is a, a very good friend, and uh, I think they do a great job with their uh, uh, production, uh, exciting fights. Uh, you know, I, I hope they do well. Uh, it's a good group of guys, obviously, uh, Ray comes to all of our fights. <clears throat> you know, he's a guy that really appreciates the stand-up fighting. So we try and support each other at each other's events. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, does it bother you when people always ask you, "Oh, are you in competition with the UFC or World of Fighting or Bellator or Glory or, or boxing?" Does it bother you when when you keep you know getting asked that question? Because it, it's totally different sports. You're really only in competition with yourself. You're not in competition with Glory. 
because the the rules are different. It's a totally different sport. Does it bother you when people keep asking you, oh, are these guys competition? Are these guys competition? What do you view these guys as? Does it bother you when you get that? You know, it doesn't bother me. I think it's a it's a fair question that most folks don't understand the difference, and I think it's really mm-hmm. our responsibility to educate the public on um, the not only the technical differences, but you know the cultural differences of say a, a kickboxing promotion and what Muay Thai is all about. Uh, MMA, I think, as people come to the events and as people become more educated, they they see the difference. Um, we have a lot of UFC fighters, a lot of MMA fighters that come to our shows, and I think they've been uh, a big part in kind of uh, making that distinction. So it, it doesn't frustrate me. I think that's that's part of the deal and part of our education process. Mm-hmm. I see, I see. Now, for your event, Lion Fight 16, how much has it helped awareness of the event and, and also ticket sales, having that backdrop of this big international fight week that the UFC's got going on? How much has that, that brand recognition that the UFC has rubbed off for your event? Well, ticket sales uh, have been going, you know, extremely well. Mm-hmm. Uh, being part of the fight week from a branding standpoint, I think, is the bigger issue. The fact that the UFC has never worked with a professional promotion before and the fact that they chose us to be included in their fight week really has resonated with a lot of people. And I think that's the question I get more than anything is, you know, how are you able to pull that off? Right. And um, I think it's because Lion Fight's got a great reputation of putting on quality shows and bringing in, you know, the best international fighters and, and yet really committed to developing our our U.S. talent. And I think the UFC understands that. I think Dana and Lorenzo are huge Muay Thai fans. I think that helps a lot, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, for the fans, will there be anything different about Lion Fight 16? Will there be open workouts? Will there be a press conference? Will there be a meet and greet? Will there be signings with some of the fighters? Will there be uh, something different this time around because you have that backdrop of the UFC International Fight Week. Will there be anything different about this week for the fans? Will the the fan experience be different this time around from any other Lion Fight event? Well, we're going to have an open uh, uh, way. I know that when we, we've encouraged everybody to come over uh, after the um, their time at the fight week to come over to the way it's going to be open to the public all of the fighters will be there they'll be available to sign autographs take pictures whatever we need to do and we just felt with all of the stuff going on that week we didn't want to create another event that you know might get kind of lost in the shuffle just curious if you didn't have this deal in place being a part of this this great event would you have tried to run a show on the fourth of july television date, uh, nobody really wanted to touch it. You know, the other groups with Axis wanted to stay away from it. And, you know, I looked at it as a a great opportunity, uh, you know, finding the right venue piece for us. Um, So, yeah, I I still would have done the event on the 4th of July. Mm -hmm, mm Mm-hmm. Now, I'm just curious, why the Palms? Obviously, it's a, a great venue, great seats, you know, not a bad seat in the house. Um, was was the Hard Rock unavailable? Were you guys trying to move it, just get a different atmosphere? What, what, what led you to the Palms? Well, the, the, the genesis of the move was really the fact that they had uh, concert commitments. Mm-hmm. And we felt that this UFC opportunity was so big. We need to find a suitable venue, and I've been to uh, a lot of fights at the Palms. It is uh, an amazing venue. It's perfect for what we're trying to do, and, you know, kind of by the, the grace of God, they were they were available, and we were able to come to a deal. Um, like any promotion, we're looking at a casino partner uh, that uh, buys into what we're doing and can really get behind the event, and hopefully the Palms is able to do that. Mm-hmm. Now, the Palms... Beautiful venue, Hard Rock, beautiful venue, Foxwoods in Connecticut that you guys were just at, beautiful venue. Who's in charge of locking down these venues because I hope they're getting a raise? You know, that's me. And, uh, <laughs> I hope you're being taken I, care of. <laughs> you know, I, I'm an old casino executive, right. so I, I have a lot of contacts. I think we were able to uh, to pull some of these uh, deals together, like Foxwoods. I've known Felix Rappaport, the COO, for 20 years, a very dear friend, and he'd seen Lion Fight. So it was a no-brainer for him to bring it to Foxwoods, and uh, they really embraced it. I was so impressed with the East Coast response that we had out there. So we're, uh, we're excited. 
excited about that. And again, looking for a casino partner that uh, wants to brand itself with the premier Muay Thai promotion in the world. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, do these casinos, like we hear all the time, like like Bellator, when they go do a casino show, the casino buys the event and then they help promote it and, and everything that goes along with it. Do, do your events, do they have that same thing go with them? Like when you're doing a show at Foxwoods or the Hard Rock, do you have that in place as well where they buy the show? Yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of different ways to kind of cut it up, whether it's a site fee, whether it's mm-hmm. a guaranteed casino buy. Uh, one of the advantages we have is, you know, Access TV has been very progressive, and they've got a great Friday night site format. So that was a no-brainer for us, and I think that's really put us in a, a whole different level of, of categories. Uh, the other thing is that uh, there's there's so many MMA products out there. Right. And, uh, you know, in my opinion, you've got the UFC and, you know, everybody's trying to, you know, compete or, or keep up with the UFC. The nice thing about Lion Fight is we, we have really no, no competition. There isn't another promotion out there that comes close to what we're doing. So uh, a lot of people have called it, you know, the UFC of, of, of Muay Thai because we were able to get out in front of everybody and uh, really establish ourselves. And I think that goes with, uh, you know, the casino venue itself, having somebody with the vision to see that this is going to be the next big, next big thing coming. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, I'm not 100% sure, but looking over the crowds at some of these events and when they do crowd scans, I don't remember seeing a lot of children. Are your events open to all ages? Because I know um, some of the shows Bellator did, you have to be 21 and up, or, or if they do a show in Canada, you have to be 19 and up because of the drinking and the gambling. So, uh, you know, when they buy a show, they want you know, you to, you come in and, and drink and gamble and have a good time and, and watch the fight. So, uh, are your events open to all ages? Yeah, yeah, there are uh, all ages shows, and we've had actually great response. You know, we think that's a an integral part of our our growth is to get these kids involved. And you know, we've seen a lot more Muay Thai schools growing up. Um, and, and giving a lot more people to learn about and train Muay Thai. And, uh, you know, our example in Connecticut was I didn't realize how, how many gyms were already out there. Mm-hmm. And our, our fan response was overwhelming. So getting the kids involved and, you know, making an event that, you know, a dad can take his son to or a son can take their mother to or, you know, vice versa. It, it, uh, uh, we want it to be a great event mm-hmm. and uh, get everybody out there, the whole family. Mm-hmm. When you got started with Lion Fight, when when this plan got put into motion, what exactly was the plan? Was the plan to give a platform where American Muay Thai fighters could could have a place to perform? Was that the main goal? Was it uh, you know get Muay Thai on television and and expose it to the American public, or was it uh, you know there's all this great uh, talent outside of the United States? There's you know Yotsen Clyde Fairtex, there's Cosmo Alexandre, all these great fighters that nobody in the United States had. had ever heard of before they got on Axis TV and started fighting for Lion Fight. Was was that the plan to give these international superstars, people not known in the United States, give expose them to the US? Like what exactly was the the main plan when you got Lion Fight off the ground? Yeah, you you pretty much share right ahead. We, we wanted to focus on uh, bringing in some world class international talent. You know, with uh, with Yuds and Ply, Fabio Penka, and some of the names you've mentioned. But we wanted to provide a platform because we think the long term growth of our sport is going to be creating our own American sport stars that can compete with these international stars. And I think we've we've been able to do that. And um, this fight in particular, the Fourth of July fight. We wanted to make sure that we gave our two top American fighters the main and co-main event, um, both Kevin and Tiffany, and bringing in international opponents for each of them, and uh, and yet bringing in a, a Thai superstar like Rungavri Sasaprapa, who's going to be fighting on our card. And, you know, he's another one of these international uh, stars that fights all over the world. So it's it's a really nice mix on this card. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, you mentioned the top two fights on the bill. Kevin Ross, the American legend, he's in the main event, and then you have Tiffany Van Soost in the co-main event. Is there any doubt that these two, one on the men's side and one on the female side of the sport, are these the two faces of American Muay Thai? 
Yeah, I think they have been uh, for for a while. Uh, Tiffany has fought uh, and done very well on our cards. You know, she's a, a promotion dream. You know, she's very marketable, but she's a very good fighter. And I think Kevin has kind of worn that blood and guts moniker for, for quite a while and has been the face of American Muay Thai. So, you know, we felt an obligation to, to fighters like this. But looking at the next series, you know, and pulling up, you know, the Nick Chastines, the Saravias. We just signed three East Coast fighters that we think have great potential. Um, so making it a sport that it still has that international cultural feel to it, but uh, um, gives us an opportunity to bring in uh, and really build these American stars. Because I think that's really the future of, of Muay Thai and lion fight in America. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, how is Lion Fight received outside the United States? Like, is this a place where the international guys are, are craving to be? You know, guys in, in England and Australia and Japan and all over the world, they want to go to the UFC and they want to fight in the United States. Is this is Lion Fight a place or getting to be that place where the international talent is like, you know what, if I, if I want to uh, prove that I'm the best, i got to be in Lion Fight. Yeah, that's really something that, uh, you know, that really wasn't we were something we set out to do initially, but that's certainly been the result. I have uh, uh, the Sasa Prapa Gym, which is one of the historic gyms in Thailand. Uh, uh, Takun is a good friend of mine. You know, people are talking about lion fight. Rob Kamen, 11-time world champion, called me from Thailand last week or two weeks ago and said, everybody here in Thailand is talking about lion fight. And I think that is that's uh, such a, a, a great endorsement to our sport that the home of, of, of Muay Thai, people are actually starting to understand what, what, what Lion Fight's about. And I get probably 10 to 15 emails a day from international fighters that want to be a part of a Lion Fight card. So it's, it's tremendously uh, rewarding for us. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, before his last fight, Kevin Ross said that he wanted to get back to being the old Kevin Ross, the guy that you know we we, we all know that that he is, the guy that we all know can perform the way that he's performed in the past. He said some of his previous performances weren't that great. Um, he, he got the win in his last fight, I believe, at Lion Fight 15. Do you think we saw the old Kevin Ross? Do you think we saw what he what he said he wanted to be in his last fight? Yeah. Uh- Exactly. You know, a lot of it with Kevin has to be the opponent and stylistically. You know, he wanted them at Embry fights, but those were not terribly exciting fights because um, Matt is a very defensive fighter. What we found then with with Kevin, uh, with Tetsuya Yamato downtown with the elbows, uh, will come at Kevin. Chris Masseri actually was uh, the gentleman he fought on Lion Fight 15 was uh, somebody that wouldn't back down to Kevin. And and I think those are are his most exciting fights. And that's one of the reasons we're bringing in Michael Thompson, because the guy is an animal. He comes forward. He's uh, he's a, a great striker. He's a very good with his elbows. So I, I can't wait for that main event. Mm-hmm. He's got to be the Kevin Ross of old if he's going to get a win over Michael Tomahawk Thompson. This guy is a, is a human highlight reel. He's a fantastic fighter. Uh, what are you expecting from this fight? Like when you put it together, uh, what, what first came to your mind when you're like, you know what, we paired these two guys up together. It should be a fun one. Well, that was really it. You know, we... We have a great matchmaker, Christine Toledo. She's got her eye on, on fighters all over the world. And, uh, you know, we get some input from the fighters. You know, Kevin, this is a fight that he wanted. He was aware of uh, uh, Michael Thompson. Um, he beat Pornsene, which was a, a huge accomplishment. And Kevin always wants to fight the best guys out there. And he's got a little bucket list of guys he wants to fight. And this was one that we felt made a great sense for this international fight weekend. Michael has been easy to work with. Uh, his team has been very excited about this opportunity and fighting for the, uh, the super lightweight title. So we're, uh, we're thrilled to have him. And I just I couldn't pick a, a better opponent for Kevin and vice versa on this main event. Mm-hmm. Now, like you mentioned, <clears throat> I'm losing my voice here, but um, like you mentioned, uh, Kevin Ross, he is going to be fighting Thompson for the super lightweight title of line fight. He, he's not really a guy who, who chases belts, and he's not really a guy who's, who's after fame. He's, he's a real fighter. He's here because he loves the sport. He has a passion for the sport. 
When he got that call saying from you guys that you wanted him to fight for the Lion Fight title, um, what was his reaction? Was he was he excited for this opportunity? Yeah, he was. And it's funny because Kevin kind of has that reputation and he really downplays belts and accolades and things like that. But uh, a couple of fights ago, he mentioned about possibly fighting for a belt and that that was one of his goals. And uh, he's actually, and if you follow him on social media at all, he's really focused on not only the fight, but being able to fight for the Lion Fight World title. You know, that, that means something to him. Uh, uh, and I think that we is, is something uh, that, that we as a promotion would be, uh, uh, you know, very happy if he won. And uh, I, I think Michael Thompson is going to do everything he can do to win. So either way, I think it's a win-win for Muay Thai in America. Mm-hmm. Now, your co-main event, Tiffany Van Sus, taking on uh, Cindy Hewler. What are you expecting from this fight? You know, Cindy, same kind of thing. She is uh, Tiffany. You know, she she loves people that will come at her. And uh, Cindy Hewer is one of those people. She's an Italian Muay Thai champion, um, very aggressive stylistically. And that's one of the things I think when you're matching a Muay Thai fight that you need to look at is, um, or any fight really, what are the styles going into it? And we were really focused on uh, very aggressive fighters, stand-up fighters are going to move forward. And and I think that recipe has has, has worked out very well for us. Um, You know, same thing with, the, the cyborg and Jorina Boris fight, you know, same kind of thing where, you know, Jorina wasn't going to back down, and Chris, uh, you know, Chris Cyborg came at her with everything she had, and she was able to dictate. Jorina was not only the distance in that fight, but the pace of the fight, and uh, uh, you know, I think that's something that that Tiffany and, and Cindy, who are both very well schooled in Muay Thai, will uh, uh, will push the other. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, what is it about the women's fights for your organization? Because you mentioned the Cyborg Arena Bars fight. Uh, that was a great fight. A lot of people are talking about that fight. Uh, Tiffany Van Sus, whenever she fights against whoever she fights, it's always a fun, exciting fight, and everyone's always talking about that fight, uh, regardless of what else happened on the card. What is it about the women's fights that seem to draw in so much attention for the promotion? You know, I think people are, are intrigued by it to see women with the uh, the dedication and the talent levels that they have now in fighting. I think it used to be a novelty at one point, but that's certainly not the case anymore. These girls train just as hard as the men do. Um, you know, they'll train in Thailand. They'll, they'll focus on their skills, and they're really world-class athletes. So I think that's something that that's uh, very refreshing. I think it's something that, uh, from a uh, from a fan standpoint, that you go to these events, and I think it breaks it up. It's always exciting to see women fight, and uh, uh, a lot of the the feedback we get is that they're just so impressed of not only how how good of fighters these girls are, but uh, um, but the, you know what kind of shape they're in, and the fact that they're world class athletes and men cyborg is one of those people as you know who's the baddest woman on the planet right. and uh to be able to have somebody with great muay thai skills dominate her the way she did i think it really shows that uh a technique like that can be very dominant in any kind of a stand-up sport mm-hmm, mm-hmm. now if tiffany van sust picks up a win on the fourth of july will she get that rematch with kaylee reese is, is there a title shot on the line for her in this fight yeah, we've already talked about that, and we, you know, Kaylee's really busy with with their gym, and she's fighting all the time. But we're trying to put that rematch together. That that's definitely on our calendar by the end of the year. Mm-hmm. Now, is there any chance that Kaylee Reese will fight for Lion Fight before that rematch against Tiffany? If if Tiffany gets a win on July fourth, is there any chance that that could happen? You know, that that was a possibility, um, but I think right now we're looking at if Tiffany gets by Cindy Hewer on this July 4th card, that hopefully within the next three or four months we're able to put Kaylee Reese and uh, Tiffany together for the rematch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, the fights that people are most looking forward to and the fights that are getting the most buzz are the two main fights at the top, the main event and co-main event, but what's a fight on this card that not a lot of people are talking about right now, but maybe come Monday morning, a lot of people will be talking about. What's the fight on here that isn't getting much attention, but it should be one to, to look out for? 
push and a lot of people are talking about it. What's the fight on this card that not a lot of people are talking about, but uh, come come Monday they, they might be talking about it a lot more than, than they are now? Yeah, I think uh, for the mass American audience to see Rungo Ray fight is huge. I've been fortunate enough to see him fight a couple times in California. I've watched a lot of his YouTube fights. Uh, you talk about an aggressive, no-nonsense guy, and, and this guy represents all of that traditional Thai technique. He comes from a great, great Muay Thai school, and uh, and uh, uh, the guy he's fighting, Adrian Marilla, you know, the killer from Manila. He's a guy that uh, uh, wanted this fight. He trained with Pornsene for Rungaree and Pornsene's fight. He thinks he's got a formula to beat Rungaree. That's another opportunity for us to showcase an American fighter. And uh, I know Rungaree always rises to the occasion. Mm-hmm. Now I wanted to ask you about a couple fighters um, when they'll be back or if they'll be back uh, fighting for Lion Fight. Um, the first one, uh, Simon Marcus. He's your champion. He, he recently had a fight in Glory. Will he be back fighting for Lion Fight? You know, we offered Simon a couple fights, and he was all over the place. You know, he was. Uh, um, we just couldn't find a date that worked for both of us. You know, I'm not real sure what our plans are going forward with Simon. Um, you know, I, I really enjoyed working with a guy. He's a class guy, but uh, we have no plans right now to, to have him on another card. Mm-hmm. Second one, Yotzen Clyde Fairtex. When will he be back? <laughs> yes, stay tuned. Uh, hopefully we've, uh, we've got him. We're going to do an announcement here in the next probably two or three weeks about some big news with... Uh, Yeltsin Clyde, bringing him back uh, to the U.S. here by the end of the year. So, yeah, you're right on the money on that one. Mm-hmm. Is there any chance we see a third fight between him and Cosmo Alexandre? The first fight, clearly, Yeltsin Clyde won. The second fight, a little bit of controversy. Uh, some people thought that Cosmo should have won that fight. Um, any chance we get that third fight? You know, that's a fight I want to see, to be honest with you. I think that's that's got a huge potential. I think Cosmo's really experienced a kind of a rebirth on uh, on uh, his Muay Thai, the fact that he's been able to fight for us. Um, I think Yodson Clay, you know, who's never backed down from a fight, I think uh, one of his concerns, I think Cosmo's a lot bigger guy than Yod is. So, uh, but that's something definitely that's on our radar. I think that's one of the, the two or three opponents that we're looking at right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yurina Bars, when will she be back? She's going to be back uh, hopefully on the same card as Yodson Ply. It'll be within the next two or three months. We, we haven't announced it, but uh, she's already agreed to it and can't wait to see her again. Chris Cyborg. God, it's so funny you mention that. Chris texted me yesterday. Um, she's working on her Muay Thai. She's trying to get down to 135. Uh, I think she sees some opportunity with uh, whether it's the UFC or, or Bellator now that Scott Coker is there. Um, but she said she wants to fight for us again by the end of the year. She's even thinking about spending some time in, in, in Thailand and just focusing specifically on her Muay Thai. Mm, I see, I see. Uh, Malapet, when will he be back? Malapet's fighting August 1st. Um, he's going to fight Justin Grekowitz. He's the co-main event on our card at Foxwoods next month. Mm, I see, I see. And how about Shane Oblonsky? He just fought recently in glory. He is coming off a win over Malapet under under the Lion Fight banner. Will he be back? Uh, at this point, we have no plans to bring him back. Um, you know, a lot of the guys that have signed with, with, with that organization, you know, I want, I, I want Muay Thai fighters. I want guys that are committed to it and people that want to fight in Muay Thai. And that's, that's kind of where we're focusing right now. Mm-hmm. So Bazooka Joe, uh, Joe Schilling, and Artem Levin pretty much not going to be back in the line fight? Um, Artem Levin is possible. I, uh, I uh, spoke with him briefly after his uh, recent win. Uh, you know, uh, as far as Joe Valtellini and, and uh, Joe Schilling, I think they're pretty much fighting exclusively for for glory. Um, you know, and and we wish them well.
well, but I have no plans. Again, I, I want guys, uh, you know, Muay Thai guys. Uh, Joe fought for us three times, and, you know, we didn't have much luck with it. So uh, hopefully he's finding uh, more success at, uh, you know, with, uh, with a kickboxing organization. So, um, you know, again, we wish him well, but uh, we have no plans to, 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 bring, uh, to bring him back. Mm, I see, I see. Just curious, how many fighters do you have under contract, and also how many are exclusive to Lion Fight? They're all exclusive. Uh, I think we've got probably 12 right now that are exclusive. We're, we're pretty picky on, on who we sign exclusively. We also have a, an agreement with most of the fighters that, uh, you know, I don't want to keep them from uh, making money if they can, uh, but just to give us a heads up to make sure that we don't have plans for them on, on a, uh, a future show. And uh, everybody's been, been, uh, been really good about that. Uh, but I, I imagine we're going to sign uh, a few more fighters here before the end of the year. Mm, I see, I see. And how about employees of, of Lion Fight? How many employees do you guys have? We have uh, about... We have a lot of people who use the consultants that we bring in for the fight. Uh, we've got uh, probably a half a dozen folks that are working pretty much full-time on, on what we're trying to do. There's been a lot of talk because of you guys linking up for this International Fight Week with the UFC that you guys could be headed to UFC Fight Pass. Is there anything there? Are, are you interested in that? Obviously, you guys have a great deal with Access TV, and you're very happy being a part of, of that family. Um, has there been any dialogue between you and the UFC about Fight Pass? And also, are you open to being a part of Fight Pass if something can be worked out? You know, we've had uh, no discussions about that. You know, a couple people have asked me that. Uh, we've been uh, with Axis now, and, you know, we, we, we really enjoy that relationship. So, uh, yeah, there's just been no discussions about it. Mm-hmm. Just curious, how did the deal with Access TV all come together? Andrew Simon uh, came to a couple of our fights. He's the uh, uh, vice president of uh, sports for Access TV, a right. uh, gentleman that I, I worked with years ago, so it's funny how a lot of these people kind of come back into your lives, but he uh, thought we would be a great complement to their Friday night fight schedule with all of the MMA shows they do, and uh, you know, they, they, they've been very supportive of us, and I think it's really helped us, us grow here in the United States. Mm, I see, I see. Now, how many events are planned for the remainder of 2014? Uh, we have uh, four more events uh, confirmed. We've had a couple international opportunities that we're still kind of sorting through right now. Mm-hmm. Now, I read an article recently. You were talking about how you would like to see some MMA fighters come over and dabble uh, in Muay Thai a little bit. Some of those fighters in MMA that have a Muay Thai background. Was it more like, let's just see how they can do in in this sport, or is it kind of, well, if we get guys who are known in MMA, they'll bring over that fan base as well? Is it is it is it one of those two, or, or a little bit of both? I think it's a little bit of both. Um, and I think, uh, you know, throw in a little bit about these guys that say they're, you know, they're, they're great strikers and they love to strike, and uh, well, let's see if you can strike with somebody who's a world-class Muay Thai fighter. Um, I think that's the lesson learned with, with Chris Cyborg. I have a lot of respect for her, and the fact that she took that fight against a world-class opponent, she didn't need to do that. And, uh, um, you know, I think it gives us an opportunity to showcase uh, such an exciting stand-up fighting style. But I think you're right. I think there's probably two or three reasons why it makes sense. A lot of MMA fighters are Muay Thai fighters that couldn't get any fights, so they ended up Mark Holtz, the great example. Cosmo Alexander couldn't get Muay Thai fights, so they end up fighting in MMA. And now that we're here, you know, they're fighting regularly for us, and, uh, uh, you know, that's really what, what they would rather be doing. So I think there's a, there's a number of levels on why that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Now, when you had this plan about getting Muay Thai in America and, and giving it a platform where all these great fighters can perform in. Um, when you had that plan, where did you think you would be at right now? Or have you have you uh, you know grown beyond what you would have expected at this point in time you'd be at? Or are you right at the level that you thought you were going to be at when you had this plan about getting Muay Thai in America? Um, could you talk about where you thought you'd be? We were 
cautiously optimistic. I don't think we would have thought that we would be part of the UFC fight week or that we would be the premier organization in, in, in three and a half years. Um, but I think everything just kind of clicked. You know, a lot of people said, why would you start this company? And, you know, the worst worst economy since the Great Depression and right. whatever. And, uh, you know, things like sponsorship and, and uh, raising money are, are over are always issues, but I think it, it was probably the perfect time to do it because we were able to run very lean. We were able to work through a business plan that, that uh, really made sense for us, create a template that uh, economically works for our fighters and works for us. And uh, what I experienced with a lot of the promotions out there was they just got way out over their skis financially mm-hmm. and uh, couldn't sustain themselves. And that was one of the things we felt was extremely important for the growth of Muay Thai was to have consistent shows. Um, and we've been able to do that and, and weather some storms. And, uh, uh, you know, I brought in uh, the sponsorship guy that worked for the UFC for six years. I've got the PR person that worked for the UFC for, I think, uh, five or six years as well. So, strategically we're in a great position I think for uh, the growth that's ahead of us and uh, I think as those things as we've grown you'll see the sponsorship and the exposure and everything kind of dovetail into it so you know the, the short answer is no I didn't think we'd be where we are but uh, um, I'm thrilled where we're at now and I just think the future looks looks extremely bright for us right right now you guys are doing a show August first, Lion Fight Seventeen. That's going to be at Fox Woods. That'll be your second time at Fox Woods, and it'll also be the second time that you are putting on a show outside Las Vegas. So I'm just curious, what other markets in the United States are asking about having a Lion Fight event in their city? What region of the United States is is really craving a Lion Fight show? And anything you can share with us? What is your team? Uh, at Lion Fight, come back with you and say, you know what, we should do a show in in this spot. What areas want a live event for Lion Fight? Well, there's been uh, a lot of interest internationally. I've got a guy from Germany who's flying specifically to our fight just so he can spend 10 minutes with me after the fight. Uh, Those are the kinds of things that uh, I think we didn't anticipate. Uh, We've got a couple British promotions and a promotion in India that want us to do Lion Fight title belts there, France, um, uh, Macau. Um, I've even got a group in Thailand that are interested in partnering with us and doing some promotions. Uh, as far as in the U.S., um, I'm so impressed with with the East Coast. You know, I'm familiar with Florida as and is a possibility. Arizona. Uh, we've got a couple of casinos. I'm kind of a casino guy, so I think it makes sense to do these events. Possibly even moving into California at some point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When you had this vision for what Lion Fight could be, what were some of the goals that you set? for the organization what were some of the goals that you have accomplished up until this point and what are some of the goals that you haven't yet been able to put a check mark next to but are hoping to accomplish uh, what comes to mind you know i think we've checked everything that we needed to check it was it was very basic you know we didn't have all of these unrealistic loss, lofty expectations it was you know c- kind of create our american stars bring in international talent uh, sustain yourself financially and uh uh, do fights on a periodic basis, you know, work towards a television deal. We've done that. Get some good casino partners. You know, we've done that. Um, and uh, the work that's never done is the branding, whether it's through T-shirts, marketing, social media. Those are the areas that you just can't do enough of, and, and we're focusing a lot of our energy on now as well. Mm-hmm. Two more questions before I let you go, and I really appreciate you being so liberal with your time. I know you're a very busy man. you got this big event coming up in a couple days, so I really appreciate your time. But uh, I'm sure you've touched on it multiple times, but uh, when you first got Lion Fight going and you first started promoting events, what did you think was going to be easy, which turned out to be very hard, and what did you think that was going to be hard turned out to be easier than you thought? Anything come to mind? I thought sponsorships would be a lot easier than they are. Uh, I thought uh, uh, putting together a team would be very challenging. Um, I've had the very good fortune of, of just surrounding myself with very knowledgeable, very professional people that have really bought into what we're doing. And I've been really surprised at how well 
you know, Christine and everybody has done and, and pitched in. And, you know, we're doing this because we love this sport and uh, think that once people see it, they're going to fall in love with it like we do. So uh, that's probably uh, the best answer. Mm-hmm. I see, I see. Now, this last question, I can't really blame you because these championship belts you guys have are, are beautiful. They're, they're, they're awesome. Whoever designed them, uh, I hope they're getting a raise as well. They're, they're, uh, they're doing a great job. Uh, th- these belts are, are fantastic, so I don't, I don't really blame you for posing with it so many times. It seems like every, every picture I see you in, you're, you're always posing with the belt. Um, uh, how much do you love these things? You know, actually, I, I uh, designed it. We've got uh, some folks in Thailand. Those are all handmade in Thailand. And I think it goes down to a branding standpoint. And, and we couldn't have a better teacher of branding in combat sports in, in the world than the UFC. Um, you know, we don't use a sanctioning body. Uh, you know, we did some fights with the WBC, with the WMC, and we just decided that, listen, why pay these people? Um, brand yourself, brand your own belt. And, uh, you know, in, in, uh, in, in the world today, marketing is such a big part of it and branding. And I want the belt. I want people to see the belt. I want people to recognize that belt with the premier Muay Thai promotion in the world. And that's what we've been able to do. Mm-hmm. Well, well, it's definitely a beauty. Uh, you know, belts, venues, you do it all. I, I hope you're being well taken care of. You're, you're truly a genius. I, I have to take my hat. If I was wearing a hat, I'd take it off for you. But, uh, Scott, <laughs> <laughs> Scott, really appreciate your time. Best of luck uh, with the event coming up on the 4th of July, Lion Fight 16. Great bill, as always. Uh, really appreciate your time, and best of luck with the event. Thank you very much. I, I, I appreciate your support.